I'm curious why now for Zillow for this change and what's on your to-do list? Why now is because the business is doing so well and we're excited about the strategy ahead and the growth into the future. We laid out a transaction strategy, moving Zillow from an advertising company to one that is more focused on helping people actually buy, rent, and sell with Zillow and our partners a few years ago. And you're seeing the results of that strategy really bear out. Right, the last eight quarters, we've outperformed the residential real estate industry. We just reported uh, Q2 results that were 13% on the top line year-over-year -year growth, and we expect to grow similarly in Q3. And so you're seeing the results of that strategy work and work well as our housing super app, this integrated transaction, really gets into the hands of more customers. And so that's why we all felt so comfortable with this transition taking place now, because we're so excited about the future ahead. So we've covered a lot of CEO transitions, especially in the last couple of weeks, it feels like. And it's not often that we hear that the role's transitioning because the company's doing super well. And you know, looking through your earnings, your recent earnings, that definitely appears to be true. But then you take a look at the stock price for performance. I'm going to pull up five years here. Of course, you had definitely a boom during the pandemic, one of those stocks that really caught on fire. You're down about 72% from that all-time high that you reached in February 2021. How much is that on your mind? When you think about your goals now in this role officially, uh, do you want to get back to those heights? Our goal as a company is to grow our share of transactions. We, many of us, use Zillow every day. We love Zillow. We're on Zillow Dreaming. And most of America knows us for dreaming and shopping. But very few folks who are on Zillow actually transact, actually work with our premier agents, our agent partners, get a loan from Zillow Home Loans, use our software and services and our great agents. That's our goal, is to grow our share of transactions. Our target is just 6% of transactions by the end of 2025. And our audience share is in the 60 70%. So our goal is really to convert more of that audience into folks who want to and can use our services to buy and to sell their homes and to rent and find their next place to rent. So that's really our goal and our focus. And if we do that, we know revenue will grow. We know company value will grow and the company will be a bigger company over time. Jeremy, it's no secret that when you are looking at a home in America, in many places, you're looking at a very short supply. You're looking at really high housing prices, let alone still relatively high mortgage rates. If you are trying to buy a new home, move out of your existing home, so what does it take for you to make that translation, to get people to buy more homes? Is it expensive on your part also to really double down on that marketing to get people to choose you? The housing market is challenged, especially for first-time home buyers. As you said, mortgage rates are high, which has squeezed their affordability, and home prices have come up sharply from pre-pandemic levels, while inventory remains low and folks are locked into their lower mortgage rates. That makes it a tough market out there. That said, people still need to move. And so while home turnover is at near all-time lows, a little more than four million seasonally adjusted from a norm of five and a half to six million homes a trade a year, folks are still moving. And those folks are starting their home search more and more online. They're looking for ways to do things more digitally. They're looking for ways to take a tour, press a button, schedule a tour the way you'd book a restaurant. They're looking for ways to get pre-approved digitally. So building the services for folks who can get it done sets us up well to help more of them when it gets easier for folks to actually buy and sell. Have to ask also about the changes in the industry, just even at the granular level. There's this idea here now that the industry could change pretty meaningfully as commissions change mm. as well, new rules around commissions. How do you expect that to play out? Yeah, the changes that came as a result of a settlement right, in the industry, we see as evolutionary, not revolutionary. And those evolutionary changes are great for consumers. They're really about helping buyers and sellers get more educated. Now, every buyer has to sign a contract with their agent, whereas before they, they might have or they might not have, depending on who they worked with. That's going to lead buyers to understand how the process works, understand what things cost. But Jeremy, what does it mean for you? Can Zillow be making any changes to kind of lean into these new changes? Absolutely. One of the big things we did as the settlement came out was we pioneered an agreement, a buyer's agreement, with our agents. And so we led what we call a touring agreement. Our big focus is ensuring that buyers and sellers are in control and are empowered. And so it's really important for us to make sure buyers can make a choice, that they're in control. And so when they sign an agreement, maybe you sign a non-exclusive agreement first as you're shopping around and finding an agent before you 
you know, move from dating to getting married to an agent and you sign an exclusive agreement. So we led the industry to pioneer what we call a touring agreement so that these buyers, especially first time home buyers, as they learn the process, they are able to make the right decision for them. They can shop around and find a great agent. It's like hinge for homes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a, you should uh, patent that one. But I want to go back to the rental market because you've brought it up a few times. And of course, uh, Zillow owns Street Easy. Mm -hmm. I have the app, I just signed a two-year lease. I'm on it every single day for whatever reason. But when it comes to the rental market, as we you know, continue to muddle through this kind of frozen buying market, what activity are you seeing there? Yeah, the rentals market is almost counter-cyclical to the housing market and there's a strong tailwind and there's a huge need for inventory to get filled. That's what's driving a lot of growth in the rentals industry broadly. And Zillow's rentals business is really booming. It's now a fifth of our revenue. It was up 29% last quarter, and we expect that growth to continue. What's interesting about our rentals business is StreetEasy, Zillow, and some of our other brands represent the largest amount of supply for a renter. Right? You are a renter. As you know, it's hard to find all the inventory. There's no national database out there. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been able to pull together the most listings, not just the big buildings, but the millions of single family homes out there that are for rent, and that's driven the largest audience. We have the most renters coming to Zillow, to Streeties, to other sites to find their place. That's now what's attracting advertisers, these big folks trying to fill their buildings, and that's what's driving our revenue growth. We see that business continuing to grow. That's a billion plus dollar business for us over time. Wow. So how do you think about the impact that the interest rate reductions would really have? At the end of the day, you're still sitting with many Americans with mortgage rates sub 4%. And so even a reduction in interest rates at this level wouldn't really help that issue. So what does the conversion rate look like as rates come down? Yeah, I mean, every little bit helps. But I agree with you that it's going to take more than one or two rate cuts to really unstick the market. Because as you said, it's really about getting those sellers who are sitting on lower mortgages unstuck and wanting to trade up. That's what helps bring supply online. And as they talked about before, it's really about builders building more inventory because we still have an inventory deficit yeah. in this country. So bringing more supply online from those two forces will help uh, really you know, uh, alter the supply, demand, and balance we have right now, and that will ultimately make it easier for buyers. Well, talk to us about the dynamic between prices and mortgage rates. This is a conversation actually we were having with Barbara Corcoran uh, just a couple weeks ago that when we do get lower rates, how much pent up demand is on the other side to actually put push prices higher? Yeah, there is still really strong demand from buyers and sellers. We track seller sentiment. Are you planning to list in the next however many years? And that's at an all time high for how long we've been tracking over the last five or six years. And that just shows you how much folks have been staying in place waiting for the ability to move. And the buyer demand that we see on Zillow and in the industry broadly is still at very strong level. So even as we get more inventory and affordability eases, you're going to see it push demand even higher, which I think will keep home prices elevated. I hear really mixed things when I talk to real estate executives about the Biden administration's policies towards the housing market. You have Kamala Harris now, as she seeks the presidential election, uh, proposing new home supply. People love that, but they don't love the rent caps. How do you think of these policies? Yeah, the great thing about working in Zillow, we've been around for 20 years and we've worked with whomever's in the White House. The big challenge is on affordability, and we're really focused on consumer education. A big part of affordability is making sure people make the right decision for them, get a mortgage they can afford, make the right decision, and work with a great agent. The larger macro issues around bringing more inventory online and unsticking sellers need to flow through for the market to get back to those levels you talked about. You know, we're down at 4 million homes trading right now, which is close to an all-time low. 